for the introduction. I'm Erwan, uh, I'm Andres Caduto. I work as a penetration tester for a large uh, financial services firm here in London. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about Remade the Flag. It's uh, an open source uh, application security uh, um, training platform for developers. Wow, oh, it's bright. So uh, most of you will agree with me that uh, developing secure software is a key component uh, in any enterprise defense strategy. And most companies, uh, especially like those that uh, operate in uh, regulated industries, uh, offer uh, some form of uh, security training to their developers. Uh, yet, um, companies still suffer from vulnerabilities that have been around for a very long time. So I'm talking about things like XSS, SQLI, Command Injection, XXC, and so on. Uh, the reason is because uh, developers, I mean, their focus is on uh, creating functional code. They're not born on knowing how to code securely. And the training that they're provided with is usually inadequate and does not provide uh, practical examples to play with. Uh, also for the business, it's uh, quite challenging to uh, measure a real competence in secure coding because mostly the assessment is done via some form of multiple choice question, which can't really provide an indication um, and I mean that uh, again makes it difficult to measure the return on investment on the security training that was offered. So training can be delivered um, mainly in two ways. So we have in-class training. Um, you have an instructor. Uh, it will go. It will teach uh, secure coding practices, uh, going through some hands-on examples that the candidates can play with. So this is very effective. Unfortunately, I mean, the activity is very expensive, uh, both from a cost perspective, uh, but also time. Um, and uh, this makes it um, often like a one-time event with no further refresher, uh, which is very important in the context of training. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, computer-based training, uh, CBT. Um, this does not usually provide hands-on examples. It's pretty static. Uh, but scales very well for large enterprises. So if you have um, tens of thousands of developers, you can't really send them all to class, even thousands, so you can't really send them all uh, to class. Uh, and also, I mean, the CBT is usually delivered remotely, on demand, uh, so there are lots of advantages to make it scale. Uh, but it really lacks um, like the, the depth that is necessary to cover uh, all the complexity of the technology that is used today, and also the different specialties of the developers. So to address this problem, um, I created Remedy the Flag, it's an open source platform uh, to teach uh, developers modern uh, secure coding practices. Uh, this is done through uh, hands-on exercises, so candidates can learn how to identify, exploit, and then remediate uh, security issues. Uh, they can do this by using the same tools and the same uh, technologies that they use at the workplace. So I mean, they can learn in a familiar environment, uh, which is very important in the context of training. Um, each candidate gets a dedicated desktop. Uh, this can be accessed through the web browser. There is nothing to install, uh, nothing to distribute, and um, the environments are ready within uh, a few seconds. I'll show you later in the demo. Um, the, the desktop environment uh, is disposable, and uh, it comes with a full uh, development environment um, and uh, with the code of the exercise that the user selected. So exercises can um, address the most prevalent security issues. Uh, and they can focus on exploitation, so in finding a security bug and then uh, using it so to, to understand how it works, to understand the impact. Um, remediation, so we have uh, vulnerable uh, code, we need to remediate it, um, and uh, the, the candidates are uh, given instructions on how to do it, or secure coding, so you will develop uh, a brand new functionality from scratch and it needs to be secure uh, from the start. Uh, the platform supports a number of programming languages and technology stacks. Uh, it's also possible to extend, uh, to extend it with, to support uh, new stacks. And it's also possible to create new exercises. So this will be also made easier with the new version that's coming up. Uh, it's all, it will include uh, an exercise creation toolkit. So this will uh, make, it, make the, the process of creating new exercises uh, uh, repeatable and quick. So during the exercise, candidates can get uh, real-time um, results, so they know whether they are uh, remediating the exercise uh, in the correct way or not. And at the end of the, of the exercise, the platform provides uh, automated scoring. Uh, there is a point system with trophies, a leaderboard, so the user can compare uh, with their peers. And it's also possible to create time box tournaments uh, between users of the same organization. 
So apart from uh, the um, I don't know, educational purpose, uh, the platform can also be used by the business to actually measure competency in secure coding and remediation. Uh, the platform provides a number of metrics that can be used to understand where are the gaps and then uh, provide target training to only fill those gaps so instead of providing generalized training. And I'll show you a demo. Okay, so this is the login page. We log in, we get into this interface. Uh, we can select the technology, in this case Java. We pick an exercise. Uh, let's go for SQLi that we talked a lot before. Uh, so we get a number of information about the exercise, what we are supposed to do, pretty much. And uh, with each exercise, we also have an exercise reference. In the new version this is going to be prefied. I'm going to turn everything to markdown. Um, so we start the exercise. So now we need to wait uh, five long seconds for the environment uh, to be prepared. Okay, it's ready. And uh, so this environment is an actual in Ubuntu desktop that it's running. Uh, uh, it's been created on demand uh, for the user. Uh, it's just a Docker container behind the scenes. Uh, so now we need to wait uh, patiently for Eclipse to load. Let me enlarge it a bit. OK. So in Eclipse, we have the code of the exercise that we selected. So in this case, SQL injection. Here we have uh, the code of the vulnerable exercise uh, uh, with this vulnerability. So if we read the instructions, they will tell us to start the application server. We start the application server. Then we can browse to, the, to Firefox. And this is the application that is produced by running the code in Eclipse. So if we read the instruction as well, again, uh, we know that the credentials are uh, user and password, so we get in this vulnerable app. So now we go and read uh, what is the question actually in scope. So we need to exploit the SQL I uh, in the login page to get unauthorized access as the user user. We can also get a hint if you're, uh, if you're stuck. So let's try this uh, an easy exercise. So this uh, SQL I will be really brutal. Uh, let's do like a user, um, like this, and then we put a random password, and we get in. So the, the application is vulnerable. We click on the automated checker, and it tells us that it's vulnerable. So now uh, let's read about uh, the remediation steps. So uh, we need to uh, modify the code um, and uh, remove the exposure from this method in this class. So now we can also get a hint. So if we get a hint, uh, it will tell us that you know, we need to refactor uh, from uh, and move away from the statement uh, object and use the prepare statement. So now we find the affected class. So user DAO. And we find uh, the affected method. So we see here that uh, we have a query string uh, which is uh, created by concatenating a user controllable input, so which is very bad uh, for uh, 2019. And uh, we refactor these uh, uh, to be parameterized as the, the hint suggested. So we put like this, we refactor the statement. Query. Very small. OK. Now I hit save. So when I hit save, uh, behind the scenes, uh, the application server will restart and will apply the changes that we made to the vulnerable code. So if now we go back to the browser, we try to authenticate uh, with the regular credentials, so username and password, user and password. So we get in, so I didn't break the functionality, it's still working. But if I try the attack payload that I tried before, we see that we can't get in. This is because, I mean, now the, the exposure has been remediated. So if I check on the automated checker, 
I can see that now it's marked as not vulnerable. This has been uh, fixed. And the score has increased to 38. Uh, it's now at 40 because we used one of the hints, and that reduced the score. So uh, when we are satisfied, or we finish the exercise, or the time runs, runs out, we can mark the exercise as completed. And then uh, we get back uh, to the platform page. So here uh, we, can, uh, we can see the results, uh, what was in scope for the exercise, the hints that we used, and then the results from the automated checker. Uh, we can also complain if we think that it's not correct. And uh, we can also see the diff between the original code in yellow uh, and the code that was uh, modified by the candidate in green. So this can also be reviewed at a later, later stage by uh, like an application security champions or um, like similar concept to see if uh, no, the, the remediation is not just correct, but it's also in line uh, with you know, the internal coding guidelines uh, of the company where it's used. Uh, it's also possible to download the exercise solution when the, the exercise uh, has been completed. A uh, user can also um, view his uh, achievements. Uh, some, these are uh, his personal stats. And there is also, uh, you can also view the, the stats of a team. So in this case, uh, we know that uh, this team has done uh, very bad on XSS stored and you only got 50% uh, uh, success rate, remediation rate. We also can get a breakdown because uh, it also happens that uh, it's not just vulnerable, not vulnerable. There are uh, different degrees of remediation. And it can also happen that the functionality gets broken. Um, if we log in on the management interface, uh, we can also see global stats, uh, depending on the organization that uh, uh, the, the admin user is managing. So we can see here that globally, uh, this, um, uh, this, um, this organization is uh, scoring pretty well on most categories. It's, doing a bit, uh, it's not doing very well on arbitrary file upload. So like we would recommend uh, target training uh, with, in that area. Um, so I've concluded with the demo. Uh, me. Okay. So uh, to conclude, the um, the platform is uh, RTF is a 100% uh, hands-on training platform. It's open source. You can install it uh, on AWS. The deployment is completely automated uh, through CloudFormation. Uh, it's very easy to install. It will become uh, also easier uh, in, the, in the next future uh, with a new release coming up with a number of exciting new features, including also an exercise app where uh, everyone uh, will be able to publish uh, new exercises or download them from, uh, from the app and install them on, on the platform. And also the, the new version will come uh, with an exercise creation toolkit uh, that will really make exercise creation uh, easier. Uh, there will be like a set of tools uh, that you can use uh, to create exercises from uh, uh, base images uh, that we will be distributing. So if you liked it, uh, get in touch with us. Um, take a look at the GitHub repo, uh, the website, and uh, the, the new version that is coming up soon. So if there are questions, I'll uh, take them. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you. Um, any questions about Remediate the Flag? Uh -huh. From then. How easy is it to add exercises on a rounded platform? To create new exercises? Yeah. So with, uh, at the moment, uh, maybe I, don't know, I would say 70% easy. <laughs> when, when the new toolkit uh, will be released, uh, I think it will be much easier. Because you can just have a vulnerable code. Then I provide you the base images for a number of technologies. And the, the base image actually comes with uh, the full environment. So if you are developing Java, uh, the, the image will have uh, uh, um, Eclipse, uh, MySQL, uh, Tomcat uh, already installed. But I mean, that can be modified depending on uh, your needs. So if you're using different IDE, then like, it's possible to put that IDE uh, in the base image. And then from there, it's, it's just a matter of installing uh, uh, the, the new exercise on the, on the IDE of your choice. And then uh, with the automated uh, toolkit uh, that we're going to provide, you'll be able to just export the changes. And that will create a new image that will just build on the base image. So also, like, the size of the image is very small uh, for these reasons. Any more questions? Um, actually, I've got one for you, Andre. So I'm working with an organization which is using uh, Azure Cloud instead of AWS. Any plans to port uh, this platform to Azure or so, make it multi-cloud? Yeah, so uh, it's on the roadmap to make it multi-cloud, but uh, 
like it will it will take uh, some time because I don't know we will have a shift of the of the architecture to to something like Kubernetes. So when uh, we move into that, then it will be possible to actually make this uh, multi-cloud. So it's uh, definitely on the roadmap. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Right, if there are no more questions, uh, we're going to take a break. Thanks very much, Andrea. And then uh, uh, reconvene in 10 minutes.